Hey guys, so today I, okay, well I did say on social media, and I think in my last video I don't really remember, that I was going to be doing more mental health videos this month because it is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I am going to be doing a lot of psychology videos this month, but uh, for some reason I really wanted to film this video today, so I apologize, it's not mental health related, but it is psychology related, so hopefully that makes up for it. Also not mental health related, but because I went to the Museum of Death in LA, I really it really inspired me to do another serial killers video, so that's coming shortly, stay tuned. So today we're gonna be talking about some psychology concepts that will blow your mind and change your life. These are three of the biggest things that I learned in school School, specifically social psychology which I took twice because I loved it so much definitely recommend it even if you're not a psych major and you have some like free electives to take in college take social psychology and human sexuality two of my favorite classes <laughs> anyway these are the three things that really like blew my mind when I first learned them I was like oh my god, it completely changed the way I looked at people, their behavior, and the world. So the first one we're going to talk about is the biggest one that blew my mind, and that is the fundamental attribution error, otherwise known as the correspondence bias or attribution effect. So this is a psychology phenomenon where we basically explain others' behavior based on internal factors, and we underestimate the external factors that could be going on in the situation. The most common example of this that I like to think about is situations where you're driving because, you know, I get some road rage here and there. It really depends. If they genuinely do something that pisses me off, I'll get some road rage. Otherwise, I'm pretty patient on the road. And probably because of this, because I learned this. So hopefully it'll bring your ra road rage down a little bit. If someone's driving very poorly on the road or cuts you off or they're speeding really bad or, you know, whatever is pissing you off about this person. Your instinct is to call them names, right? You say, wow, they're being an asshole. Look at this dumbass over here like that's our instinct right to be like they're a shitty person basically sorry for all the swearing but that's what happens on the road am I right <laughs> so we tend to assume that that is their personality their disposition they were born like that that's just who they are they're a bad driver all the time and we underestimate what could possibly be going on in their lives that are making them drive that way typically what I like to keep in mind is maybe they're a new driver granted they probably wouldn't be speeding maybe they're in a rush somewhere they're late to somewhere, which doesn't excuse, you know, bad behavior on the road, especially when other lives are at stake too. But maybe there's something else going on. It's not necessarily that they're just an asshole, you know? Same thing with, you know, people at the grocery store who are just being a jerk to you. You know, you could really apply this concept to anything. We tend to just assume you know, that is just who they are as a person and not what could possibly be going on in their lives that make them act that way. Because I'm sure some people have probably underestimated your life experience and just, you know, thought you were a bad person or having a bad day in this, sh I don't know. But we all make this mistake. Our brain just instantly likes to categorize and be like, nope, that's just who they are. So it really makes you look at the world in a different way, especially people and their behavior and just think for a moment before you go into that road rage or whatever situation it could possibly be, before you go there, first and foremost, try to think, you know, they're a human being. They're not just what their behavior is displaying right now. The next one is confirmation bias, which for me very much comes into play with politics and religion. When we want to believe something, we will often seek out information that confirms it and ignore information that proves it wrong. It's motivated by wishful thinking. And when we want to believe something is true, we will believe it. We'll find a way to believe it. And typically this makes us closed off to new information that could possibly change our minds about something. Specifically politics and religion, which I'm not gonna get too into because that can be kind of controversial, but it does help to explain why it's not necessarily good to debate with someone because typically whatever information you throw at them, they're probably not going to take in because they're not as open-minded. Granted, that goes for all of us. All of us have our morals and our set of beliefs and views that we believe, and nothing will really shake that, whether we're open-minded or not. But this one blew my mind and very much changed the way I thought about everything, including politics, which is very much a heated topic right now because of the president and everything going on. But as humans, we just do not look at things objectively. We have our own 
set of beliefs, and sometimes that can make us a prisoner of our own prejudices. Sometimes it's a good thing to break out and look at information and new information and have an open mind to new stuff that maybe contradicts some of the things that you believe in. I'm not saying you have to change your mind, but it doesn't hurt to look at that new information and take it in and not just let your unconscious filter it out and ignore it because that's technically what your brain is trained to do. You, you want to believe something, you're going to believe it. This can also apply to people who have anxiety, who view the world as dangerous or scary or something is definitely going to go wrong today. They'll seek out situations where things do go wrong. As small as they may be, people with anxiety can kind of blow those things out of proportion. Someone with low self-esteem who believes that people ignore them on a daily basis when they go out they might view neutral behavior from someone and see it as more negative. When that's really not the stranger's intent, they're not actually ignoring you, it's just, again, it can go back to the attribution error, we don't know what's going on in their life. The third and final one I'm gonna talk about today, which let me know if you want a part two to this, there's so many amazing psychology concepts that I've learned throughout my years in school. If you want more, I could do like three a video and make it a whole little series, I don't know. But the last one we're gonna talk about is cognitive dissonance. This is when we have two beliefs or two behaviors or a belief and a behavior that contradict each other and so we alter one of those things to fit the other. Sometimes subconsciously, we don't always know that this is what's happening in our brain. The classic example used in psychology for this is a study that they did and college students said that they enjoyed the study more when they were paid less to do it because their brain was you know, rationalizing that if I didn't do it for the money, I must have done it because it was interesting. Otherwise, why would I have spent my time doing it? Another example of this is a smoker who knows cigarettes cause cancer. They will either change their behavior, AKA stop smoking, or they will change their thought process about the smoking, such as, well, we all die anyway, to kind of compensate for their dissonance that is going on because they know slowly but surely they are killing themselves. Our brains do this all the time, pretty much with every daily activity activity to rationalize why we spend our time or our money doing something. And even though whatever your rationalization is, whether it's true or not, it will also exaggerate how true it is. For example, when you volunteer somewhere, you're spending your time somewhere for free you will over like estimate how much like life experience you're getting out of it. Your brain will make you feel 10 times better than it probably actually is making you feel because you're spending your free time doing it for no reason other than to help someone else out. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Whatever your brain needs to do, volunteering is great. Highly recommend it for anyone. Animal shelters, the best. For instance, when I volunteered at a cat shelter, I had to drive pretty far to get there. And so every day, this one I did more consciously. I would tell myself, you're doing an amazing thing here. It's so worth it. It's so rewarding. And I did it for over a year. So, I mean, obviously part of me was like, I don't want to drive that far, but because I was doing something so great, I was rationalizing my decision with that thought process. That's a little bit more of an obvious, less negative example, but that is an example. So these are the three things, the biggest ones out of anything that I'm gonna talk about on my channel that blew my mind when I learned these in school and just changed the way I thought about other people and the world everyone's behavior, and it just makes you look at people differently. Moral of the story, have an open mind to everything. Have a more open mind about everyone, and recognize your behavior and your thought process about it. Let me know if you have any other psychology concepts that messed you up or blew your mind or anything like that down below, and maybe I'll cover it in a future video, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.